Hello, Supercoach fans, Inner Sanctum fans. Welcome to the Inner Sanctum Supercoach show. Looking back at round 21, maybe. It's so hard to keep track when there's so many rounds these days. Looking ahead to the second week of finals for most people. Joined by Dan and Mick this week. Dan, how are you going? How would your team go this week, mate? Uh, pretty miserable, to be honest. Uh, only just scraped over 2,200. Uh, in one of my leagues, I was up against my uncle and uh, <laughs> I had Dunkley captain. And so it came down to that. We were both looking at it and he he just needed to get to 51 points and it was looking sketchy at halftime when he only had about 26 and, and four possessions. But uh, thankfully scraped home in one out of my four leagues. <laughs> nice one. Mick, I reckon you probably fared a bit better. How are you doing? How'd your team travel this week? A little bit better. 23.30 from my boys this week, which was good enough to get me uh, three wins in my three leagues that I'm uh, in finals with. Uh, one of them was just scraped over the line by a measly 12 points, but uh, it's it's not it's not how it's not how many it's how. So I'm um, I'm uh, I'm pretty happy to be uh, advancing to the next round and now. In the uh, in the same debacle as everybody else about what to do with uh, with our boy Nick Dacos, which we'll get to later, I'm sure. Exactly, yes, definitely. We'll talk about Nick Dacos. We won't talk about my team. Every final lost. Uh, when you see my Nathan in a minute, you'll know why. It cost me victory in a couple, I reckon. Um, we'll start with you, Dan. Your Gary's and Nathan's for round twenty one. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> I can't remember which round. Is it round twenty one? We just did. It's round 21, right. round 21. So we've got yeah. three three rounds left, round 22, 23, and 24. Oh, thanks, You're right, mate. there are too many, too many rounds this, these days. Um, look, uh, I think that my my Gary for this week had to be Tom Stewart. Um, absolute man mountain back there in the, the back six of, of Geelong. Um, he is phenomenal. Um, and I think he was like, he was almost being like, negatively uh so like new uh negative forward on him for like the first quarter and it didn't even matter um absolutely useless trying to take that guy out of the game uh but look my uh bit of an unpopular uh, decision here but my nathan i'm gonna give it to um harry sheasel the cheesel mainly because i just wanted to put this as my uh my background and i had a, a lot of um <laughs> starters that i could have given it to um, but I thought, you know what? No, it's too easy to go some of the others. Um, can I put the challenge to the T's and hopefully he can, uh, he can bounce back this week. Nice work. Good to have some. We get uh, sponsorship from Cheezels after having them mm. product placement in a podcast. Uh, Mick, Gary's and Nathan's mate for round 21. Nathan, uh, definitely, well, he's actually not my lowest scoring player. My, my lowest scorer was, was Isaac Heaney, but, you know, I've come to accept these kind of crap scores out of him because I've brought him in as a sub-500 player, and that's exactly what he is, and he popped out of 54. Um, so the, uh, but, but I expect better out of Jack Steele, who only got a 57 this week, certainly not, not good enough from... Uh, from young Jack, um, you know, we paid a premium for him and um, he's, he's had some good scores, but then 57 is just way too low for a, a bloke who's, you know, now sitting at 575k. Uh, and this bloke, the champion that he is, the bond, has to be my Gary. Um, he's just pumped out another well, 153 for the big man this week, um, which... I think I had him as a pot in two of my uh, my three leagues too, so it helped me get over the line in at least two of them. And and Sheasel's Sheasel's crappy score actually helped me get over the line in in one of the other ones as well. So he he I think this other bloke needed Sheasel to have an eighty in his score, but he scored a fifty something. <laughs> so thank you, thank you, Sheasel, much appreciated. Nice one. Well, my uh, my two Garys, I had one head head league. My mate my opponent had Bont, and I had Libo who scored one hundred and fifty nine. So that was sensational. And then I knew Butters would rip Geelong a new one. He got the 137, so I had the captain on him. I don't know why he didn't put the vice captain on Libba. But anyway, that was a bit silly. Um, My Nathans could be the whole team. But this bloke, let's start with that picture and then I'll change. Um, Doing the squirrel grip on your opponent. They only got found out like Thursday night last week, so we couldn't talk about it last week. Um, Look, this this squirrel's even got a little nut in his hand, so that worked out well. (laughs) Took Miller, what are you doing? I had to play one short because I've run out of trades and I have cover on the uh, bench in the defence and the forwards, but not in the mids. Um, so I had to play one short and that cost me. So Took Miller, 
It's almost never again type areas after that. So I better not leave a squirrel up for the whole time. There's Took. He's holding, he's got a ball in his hand too. So that works all right. <laughs> not good enough, Took. Simple as that. Cool. We thought uh, we'd talk about our uh, man, Nick Dacos. Uh, obviously, he's out for the rest of the Supercoach season. I think everyone who's half decent and still in contention has him. So the question is, what do you do? Uh, we're each going to give you sort of one option depending on on where you're at. I might start with uh, you, Mick, just because if people have got one trade left, they could probably trade to anyone a similar price. So just give us who you think would be the best choice Sort of over yeah. that five hundred thousand to switch Dacos to. Yeah, I'm in. I'm in a, a, an interesting position where I've got two trades left. Um, well, but I only just asked 15, you if you had one. <laughs> only fifteen grand. Um, well, get, I'll get to my point. Is that is that if you have one, you, obviously it depends on the amount of cash you've got as well. So you know, being yeah. in a position that I have two trades and no cash um, versus somebody who has one trade and say hundred k, then the situation is very different. But um, but say the likes of Tom Stewart is 640k. I don't have him in my team. Dacos now only valued at 570, so I can't actually bring him in without uh, without a double trade. Um, and I don't want to use both trades up this week and and you know I have, lose a player for around 24, um, and then I have no one to switch to. So I'm going to have to go one of the cheaper options. Um, so players that I can afford under 570, or on, with my cash that I have would be about 580. Um, and blo- I'm looking at blokes here that are, you know, more pods as well. I mean, you've got your Jack Sinclair's uh, priced at 559. Uh, you've got your, you know, Will Day's 532. Um, Sam Doherty's 580. So if you don't have Sam, he's only in 11.5% of sides. But then there's some really interesting, genuine pods like Nick Newman. He's in some really good form at the moment. And mm. you can pick him up for 543. Uh, you had 144 on the weekend against. Uh, Against uh, it was Collingwood, wasn't it? Friday night they played. Um, no, the Saints, I think. The Saints, sorry, yeah, that's yeah. Collingwood the week before. Uh, yeah, it was one forty-four on against the Saints. Um, and then you know my, the likes of Bailey Dale, our old mate Bailey Dale, Daniel's old mate Bailey. Don't Dale, do it! Don't do it! Don't do it! Hundred thirty on the weekend. Um, back up to five oh eight k. Uh, so you know he's hit another bit of a bit of you know a bit of a patch of form. So so a couple of options there. It really, yeah. It, it again depends on your. I wouldn't do a double trade if you've only got two left. I know I won't be. Um, I'm going to be looking to either go to Sinclair or to possibly um, to maybe a, 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 a Nick Newman's a really interesting prospect, actually. I think someone who's in that kind of form and 1.1% of teams is going to be an absolute genuine pod. So that'll be, uh, that'll be my target, I think, for this weekend. Oh, I love the uh, conviction at the end there. Nick Newman, 1.1% of sides. Real good option, I reckon, for people out there. Dan's yeah. nodding because he's in a good rain of rain, good rain, good form. I'm trying to say, geez, you're going well with my words tonight. Uh, Dan, for those who maybe want to find someone a bit cheaper, just so they could maybe upgrade someone else. Have you got someone sort of sort of 300 to 500 k? They think, yeah, I can I can make 100 grand here, but then I could upgrade someone else as well. Yeah, so I think. Uh... One of the one of the top ones, um, sitting around four hundred and seventy thousand, averaging ninety six point five, um, is a guy that's averaging one hundred and five point three for his three round average. Is um, Jake Lloyd? So he would have been, you know, thereabouts uh, for lots of people's D six for the last six seven years or something. This guy mm-hmm. is extremely uh, consistent. He doesn't usually like when he scores a bad score. He doesn't usually score an absolute shocker. He scored a couple this year, but he doesn't usually do it. So. Um, I think he could be uh, a really good option. And at 470, what are we? You're netting approximately 100. Um, so there's a couple of interesting ones around that same sort of vein. Like we were talking about um, Caleb Daniel. Um, a couple of like when we did our mid-season review, he was in the top six uh, defenders. Mm-hmm. He's had an absolute shocker since then. Uh, five round average 74.4, three round average 65.3. Um, look, it could be a, a, a touch of the Bevos about him. Um, Bevo loves to loves to just close his eyes and chuck the, the names on the um, on the magnetic board, and I don't think Caleb's name's been falling exactly where it needs to at the moment. Um, my one that's an interesting there's a there's a few interesting ones out there. Um, we've spoken about Mason Redmond and his ability to go big. Uh, I think he's still a proposition. 
Um, they're playing North this week. Um, you know, so he could he could pull out a big score. He scored 123 last week. Uh, he's a guy that can actually um, really pull out massive scores when he needs to. Um, and the other one, just in terms of, of form, um, is a guy named Mitch Hinge, which um, you might remember him from from last year as a guy that you would have picked up for about 123k or something, and rose about um, 200,000 or something last year. Uh, he hasn't really done much this year, 83.9 average, but his three round average is 109.7, which puts him top of the tree uh, for for that sort of price range. Um, and his five round average is 102.8. So he's he's hit a vein of form. Uh, he is a little bit more expensive than Jake Lloyd and a little bit more risk. Um, but if you kind of think he's also got that defensive mid capability, um, the dual position status, so that might help you out um, if there is, you know, a future injury. But uh, yeah, so I think a few few to think about there. That's it. I think the uh, the Adelaide defense is a bit short staff from what I uh, sort of gather. So um, I was charged with finding a, a sort of one under 300K. And to be honest, there's really none. So if you really want to downgrade one and upgrade another, you're probably not going to be able to with the defence. The ball AC from Adelaide scored 112 last week in his first game because the Adelaide defence needs more people. So if he keeps playing, you might take a punt. He's only 123K, so you could upgrade anyone else in your side. And about all I could think of was Liam Jones. He's back. He scored 83. The Doggies play Hawthorne. Then they play West Coast. So if you're ever going to get some intercept marks, maybe those couple of weeks are a chance for him. But there is not much. So if you got two trades, maybe it's best to sort of sideways take us, I reckon, as best you can, or slightly downgrade like we've talked about and slightly upgrade someone else, or not at all. So... There's our day cost advice. We'll see how Nick Newman goes on the weekend. We'll see how whoever you said, Dan, goes. Jake Lloyd. And we'll see Good how Lloydie. Lloydie, Newman, and Liam Jones go. And uh, we'll report back next week. I doubt my bloke's going to score them. What a spot. Them. Nah. Ah, <laughs> uh, dear. Cool. Um, we'll continue on. And uh, we've got three more season reviews. To throw you away this week, when this week we're looking at the Swans, uh, the D's and the Lions. Mick, I forget who you were doing, but I'll throw to you and you can give us your uh, your awards for this year's team. The Lions, maybe? Yeah. I'm not back on the, the D's this week. i settled up with the D's. Uh, my dear departed mother's beloved D's. Um, she, uh, sorry. The uh, MVP, um, technically, Clary has the, the higher average at 124.7, but you know, obviously with his ongoing injury issues, he only played 10 games. Um, the track, oh, no, I oh, know. What is it with that foot of his, that festering turtle of the foot? Um, <laughs> Just wash your feet. Wash your feet, <laughs> Holly. Um, and, uh, but the track, though, has played all 20 games this season, so he's been uh, very consistent uh, and, and 120.7 average. So I'll, you've got to give the MVP to the track who has, you know, hasn't missed a single game and, uh, and averaging 120 plus. So that's very impressive. Um, and then you've got um, the likes of um, uh, who was Stephen May has been a real letdown for, I think, there haven't been too many that have really dropped off. I mean, Brady Grundy, obviously, you know, he started off at about 510. He's down to 430. He's only averaging 89.2. Um, May averaged nearly 93 last year. This year he's only averaging 84. So he's he's sort of come down a little bit in those in those scores. Um, Maxi start obviously no we, we know Maxi Big Maxi started off a bit slower, but he's uh, he's his average has crept back up now to 108.8. So he's uh, and he's, he's actually his price is actually 694 now, which is which surprises me with a, an average of 108.8. But he's obviously his three round rolling average is, is quite good. He had another 130 on the weekend. Um, and then a lock for next year, you know, if he has an uninterrupted preseason, um, I think Clary is, is a lock for a lot of teams. Um, he's he'll probably it's interesting to see what I haven't heard the latest on him. Have you boys heard whether he's he's how far off he is from coming back in? Look, he's he's every week he's I'm gonna be back, he or he's supposed yeah. to be back. I think he was um talking about um a, a likelihood that he'll be back this week. So You'd think that if you're the D's, um, you want to get him back to play a bit of footy before the um the 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 buy before the finals. Um, yeah. yeah. 
So they might bring one as a sub, possibly, or you know, just to get get some match fitness back into his legs. You know, if, if the if the games aren't really on the line, uh, de- depends on on their run home that they have. Um, so there's yeah, a few headaches there for uh, for um, for Simon Goodwin. But um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll wait and see on that one. But um, yeah, good season for the D's, and uh, you know they're, they're firming as the equal favourite. Well, looks like Carlton are, are favourites no. these days, aren't they? We're, looking that way. We're not, we're not here <laughs> talking about off. Carlton this year. That's for sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, Oliver, Oliver will be right next year. Either lock for me and. Uh, Gorn would be if we know he's solo ruck, I would strongly consider. But if he keeps doing what he's doing, he'll be 700,000, and that is very expensive to spend on one player. I try to avoid that if possible. So I guess we'll wait and see. But yeah, the standard Oliver Petrarca Gorn type stuff, I think, for 2024. Uh, nice and simple with the D's. Good job, Mick. We'll uh, throw to you, Dan, and the you must be doing the lines. I am doing lines. Uh... Could have uh, thrown you a spanner there and said, no, I'm doing the swans. And then you would have been up uh, well, shit creek without a paddle, but that's all right. Um, so uh, look, wheeling <laughs> off the lines, uh, we've got the, uh, Mike's not here. So I've got to chuck in a little swear word every now and then. Otherwise, uh, you know, we don't meet, we don't meet our quota. Um, <laughs> look, MVP, Josh Dunkley has to be the MVP, 119.6. Um, this guy almost cost me, uh, a all of this cost me a league win on the weekend. Um, I don't know what was happening. I was out on Friday and uh, didn't realise that I'd missed the missed the game and um, thought for a moment, yes, I've done the right thing. I've got the VC on on Bont, and when I checked it, I didn't. Uh, I was pretty devastated with that. So um, anyway, look, he he pulled out uh, eight scores above 120. So he's he's loved that move up north. Um, lower scores of 77 and 84, but no other scores below 100. He missed those couple of games with um with that corky, but apart from that, he's been pretty durable up there, uh, and he'd have to be the MVP. Um, biggest surprise? Look, there weren't that many surprises for the Lions this year, but I, I I went with Will Ashcroft. Um, you always hear about these players that are going to be ready-made players that come in, uh, and it is like it's an achievement when they when they're actually able to do it. So this guy went up three hundred and seven thousand since the start of the year. Average eighty four point five, which included a couple of games where um, he he just didn't turn it on, and then obviously the game where he did his ACL uh, could be a cheap option in twenty twenty five. I doubt that they're going to risk him um, next year. Look, they might when he comes back, uh, but it's going to be late next season, so he might be back for a bit of a finals run. But yeah, could be a cheap option in the future. Uh, biggest letdown. I'm going to go with Daniel Rich for that. Um, averaging 81.3, only one score above 100 out of seven games that he's be, uh, been able to play in the first team. Um, low scores of 52, 62, and 69. He's lost $83.9 thousand. Uh, I think last year he would have been thereabouts top 10 or so defenders. And at some points in the season, he, he, he gets on a bit of a run. Um, but this guy just can't even get in the team at the moment. Um, I think we may have seen the last of him if he can't get up. I think he's got an injury sort of scare at the moment. Um, 2024 lock. Uh, again, there's not there's not a heap that I would actually like, yes, stamp of approval because I feel like Josh Dunkley is going to get uh, midfield only status, not midfield forward status next year. Um so again, there's there's always those possibilities, especially if he's super highly priced. Um, Lockie Neal has slipped a little bit, and I think he's always a, a good one to go. But um, not not massive standout, and and for that for that reason of the the dual position. Yeah, I agree. If Dunkley's mid only, which I suspect he will be, then he's probably not going to be picked by as many people. Um, yeah, pretty good summation, I reckon, of the lines. Mick, any other Brisbane thoughts or? No, I don't think so. Just thinking about locks for next year, I, I don't, I can't really think of any either. There's, yeah. I thought um, the likes of um, like McCluggage would really come through this year and and, yeah. and become you know mm. that that star midfielder for the, the Lions, but it just he just hasn't sort of taken that next step. I don't think I haven't actually checked his average, but um, but I haven't sort of noticed him you know up in that hundred mark. Probably about um, the same. Yeah. Same as last yeah. year, I reckon. So mm. and then the guys in the past, I have like Harris Andrews. They've just really dropped off as well as not, you know, being, you know, they're just 80, 80 a week players now. So, um, no, couldn't agree more. There's real no locks that stand out. If Dunkley is a, a, a mid only, he's worth a look because he is a bloody good scorer. But um, but 
I don't know, there's a lot of lot of other good options out there. So yeah. Yeah, perfectly surmised. Good job, Dan. Thanks, Mick. Um, I'll have a big, big quick chat about the Sydney Swans. Uh, no surprise who their MVP is. He has had a standout season, and I suspect those in the top of the ranks have had young Errol Goulden since the start of the year when he was a forward only. Um, he was below 500,000 at the start of the year. Those people who saw the signs pre-season, well done. Um, he's averaging 112. I suspect that next year will be more than that. I'm watching the Swans the last few weeks. They just want the ball in his hands across halfback the whole time. He just runs where he wants. Jake Lloyd's not going to score much anymore because Errol Gordon's now the man that's the one with the uh, beautiful uh, kicking skills. Um, he had the one stinker in, in round six or seven whenever they played the Cats down the category, got 40 on, everyone jumped off. But that's pretty much it. He's had 14 of his 20 scores over 100. Um, he's made 132K. I reckon he'll lose his forward status. Um, for sure, he might even have defender or defender slash mid. Who knows? So one to keep an eye on. But uh, I can't see him. I, I've written down my four or five that I want next year, and he's one of them because I reckon he will just skyrocket even further. Um, the the biggest, he's also the biggest pleasant surprise. No surprises there. The ones that have dropped off, the biggest duds, if you will, this year. There's no no surprise. There's quite a few of them given the Swans made the grand final and now they're outside the eight with three rounds to go. Uh, they've had nearly six people, five, nearly six lose over 100K. So that sort of tells you a bit. Uh, I've got two. The one who's come second biggest uh, let down is Isaac Heaney. Averaged 101 last year, down to 85. He's lost 112K. I don't know what's going on there, but uh, he's really dropped off. But to... Uh, to the real one, which I know he's been in your side, Dan. He's probably still in your side, and that's Callum Mills. Or is he out again? He's, <laughs> nah, he's in. He's in. <laughs> he's, he's, I don't, he's I don't awesome. want him in, but he's in. He's <laughs> averaged 117 last year, now only 85. That's that's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Yeah. Nearly lost $200,000. Um, they'll be you watching. The bet you in the preseason next year, he plays exclusively in the middle, and everyone goes, oh, He's back, he's back, and so he'll be picked up. But no, steer clear, steer clear. Um, to watch next year is just Errol. I'm all about Errol. Uh, Chad Warner, I thought, would be a bit better this year. I think maybe yeah. he, got this, he averaged the same as last year, 98. Whether he can take that next step, that grand final last year, was there any good player? I thought, oh, he'll, he'll step it up, but not quite. I think they've got too many blokes who are just pretty good midfielders. So it just rotates everyone through there, and no one dominates like... Bont and Libra at the, at the Bulldogs. So there's my quick swan summation. Dan, Mick, any other swans you can you can think of? You could talk about a lot of them dropping off. Yeah, uh, I agree. I agree. I th at the, after the, um, like you said, you, you write down your five or six names of players that you look at and through the season that you go, this, this player is going to explode. And um, I think lots of people would have had, um, you know, Butters and Rosie and, uh, as you said, after watching that grand final, Chad Warner was the only guy that uh, put in mm. on the on the day, um, and he has he just hasn't taken that next step. I don't know Ness, he's been a bit injured, but like, um, yeah, I I really I thought he was going to be um, one of my players that, that sort of set me apart. I think he scored a massive score in preseason, and that saw his ownership jump. So I I didn't get on him as a pod, <laughs> um, thankfully. But uh, yeah, it's just there's a few ones. Uh, I don't know. Four song long miles with like uh, a bit like Bevo, just sort of swings swings it around and, mm. and just <laughs> I don't know. He, he's yeah, he screwed Mills. Yeah. Exactly right, Mick. Mm. Agreeance. Yeah, I, I think looking at Warner actually just before you started talking about him, I thought I'll, I'll do a bit of a dive into his scores this year, and he's actually. 10 tons, he's at a 130, so two 137s, a 135, a 123, and a 122. Um, and but interspersed with that, there's a 59, a 61, a 74, and a 53. So that's those four games in particular really just killed his average. And if he can, you know, he's a 22 year old kid, and we, we don't really know, he's a very talented player. If he can just knock those, those really you know, tribute to Mikey, shitty scores out of his uh, out of his system, then uh, I, I can't see why next year, you know, he won't become that that premium for mm. uh, premium mid with um, averaging one ten plus. I think he's shown that he's got a good ceiling, and um, 
and yeah, I think he just needs to to get that week on week consistency back into you know into his game, and and he could definitely be a a, a really interesting pod to start the season with next year. So it'd be a bit of a gamble, but but maybe one worth taking. You know, on this show we love a gamble. We love to mm-hmm. take our pods. So Warner, I will add him to the. Uh, I've got a nice list going here on my laptop for next year for the side we're going to have as a uh, as a group. Warner, watch that sees mid time in the preseason. Um, we are. Almost to the end, we'll just uh, give you a quick vice captain slash captain choices for round 22, given we're in the second week of finals for for people. Mick, just give us one vice captain and one captain. We don't need your whole side. One of each. Pressure's on. One of each. One of each. I am going Petrarca on Saturday night into Bonson Pally. Lock it in. Done. Perfect. That That is exactly what everyone should do. Can listen Dan. to me. I'm all for it. Dan, <laughs> you get one combination. Uh, <laughs> the pressure. It's different to that. Uh, you know what? Um, stuff it. Uh, I'm going to put it on uh, Luke Parker against uh, Gold Coast. I'm going to put him the VC. And uh, you know what? Well, some people like to watch the world burn. Um, I'm going to put it on uh, going to put on Team English um, versus the Hawks Rock uh, down in Tassie. I reckon he can have a big one. I like it. All right. So we've gone Petrarca and Bont into uh, – that was a weird combination. That's how good it was. I've forgotten. Um, someone in English. Oh, Parker. Was it Parker? Parker. Jesus. All right. We'll see which one. And for me, I'd go Dacos because what does it matter really? I'm out. He can get a zero on the Friday. Nah, I'll go um, Josh Dunkley on the Saturday afternoon. I think he'll uh, – get one or two games back now, he'll go bang in a hard-fought game against Adelaide. Score more at home, and then I'll go uh, Zach Butters again. He was unreal last Saturday, so I'll back him on the Sunday night in the last game of the round. Beautiful, short and sharp. Take those. If you pick any of those captains, we guarantee you will win your round. Don't this week. pick mine. English, yeah, English. Don't Bond. Pick well, you can pick English, but or don't Butters. pick Parker. Come on, don't go Parker. English. English Bond and Butters Parker. will score four hundred and fifty between the three of them. If you've got all three, you're home. But just take one of those as captain. Take it to the bank. We, we're we all about it here. All good. All right, boys, that's it. Thank you for joining us out there, those people still watching. We doubled our viewership from last week to this week. We went from probably 13 to 26. So if we can get 52 this week, we're laughing. But uh, we appreciate those that are still watching. A couple of weeks to go. Thanks for your time, boys. People, check out the Inner Sanctum's website. Cheers, boys. Have a good one.